want to introduce uh, Betty Schwartz, um, who is going to be giving us a presentation on Project uh, Archeo, um, Explore uh, Ancient uh, Cahokia, uh, City of the Sun. Um, so Betty, I'll, uh, I'll just, you know, without further uh, introduction or ado, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. Uh, this all began with a wonderful grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Uh, we have developed an augmented reality tour of the 21 acre site. And in the middle of all of this, COVID came. And what happened? The museums closed, kids couldn't go on field trips anymore. Uh, and so we are taking our assets and making a virtual tour that can go to schools, not only in the bi-state area here, but anywhere in the world. And so I'm going to walk you through it and it is basically about ancient America and the people who lived here thousands of years ago and the contributions that they made. So let's go. Next. Oh. You skipped one. Sorry. <laughs> do you know what it was like a thousand years ago? How do we know what it was like? Well, from the objects that are left behind, next. And so we're going to begin with archeology. span We have within this program, several investigations. There are six at present. Next. And I'll give you a opening video to show. Oh, by the way, there are 22 videos in the whole program. So it's really a streaming media site. They may not work real well over Zoom, but you can sign up and see all of them. But let's take a look, a look at this one first and we'll move on from there. So let's start it. Check it out. We're on the grounds of the Cahokia Mounds World Heritage Site in Illinois, just across the Mississippi River from St. Louis, Missouri, famous for its gateway arch. Cahokia Mounds is sometimes called the City of the Sun and will be our headquarters during our investigation of the Mississippians, the people who built this ancient metropolis about 1,000 years ago. I'm Lena. This is Emily. You know Chris. And I'm Dion. The four of us are part of the Project Archeo Exploration Team. It's said that Cahokia is the most important mountain site of all. And many of today's Native American tribes, including Creek and Caddo, who are my relatives, trace their origins to the Mississippian culture. Who were the Mississippians? Why did they build such a big city here? Where did they go? That's what we'll be finding out. When you visit a mound site, you're literally standing on time. With secrets of the past, perhaps just below your feet. Remember, these mounds are sacred to Native Americans. Professional archeologists approach their job with great care and great respect. We'll be doing the same. So let's get going. Yeah, you've got a job to do. Let the investigating begin. Okay, next. Here are the six investigations we have now. This would obviously, uh, this is coming off of slides, so I can't really go into every one of them, but I can tell you a little bit about each one of them. It starts with the uh, archeology, span learning about archeology, span why, how it's done, how people know, what the objects are that they found, how they date them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then we go into the periods of time before Columbus. And of course, there are lots of things that happened in the world before Columbus came to America. And one thing that is particularly interesting when you look at the time periods, Cahokia, the city where we are going to explore, was larger than London at the time. So the third investigation is really about Cahokia. The fourth one is about ancient architects, not only uh, Mississippians, but all the way back to the hunter-gatherers, the um, archaic people, and uh, the woodland people in Ohio. Somebody was asking me about Ohio. That's all in there. And then the end of it is where did they go? And that's always the mystery. So next. The virtual program, which this is all online, uh, hooks up with um, 
Google Classroom. There are 22 videos, six online games, there are interactive timelines, maps, and we have whiteboard activities where there's an assignment and the kid writes on a whiteboard and that can be sent to the teacher. Quizzes, awards, and then the most exciting part of it all, I think, are the 3D models of artifacts and reconstructions, which I'll show you a few of those in a minute. So next. There's a simple game, the easiest game, basically you click on those and you are learning uh, how deep you have to go to get various artifacts. And the deeper you go, the older they are, of course. And you learn the difference in features and also uh, remains. And there are six other games that get more sophisticated as you move along. And basically they're all about architecture. So uh, archeologies, not architecture. Okay, next. We also start off with a timeline. These are interactive timelines. They move back and forth. And as I was saying, you, within the timeline, and if I could show you the whole thing, you see that uh, the Vikings came to America at certain times. There were various things built in China and all those things are in juxtaposition with what's happening here in North America. So next. We delve into four time periods, Palo Indian period, which was the very first one where they, they think they, uh, the people came over the uh, Bering Sea, the bridge over the Bering Sea. Next. The woodland period, that's mainly, you see the remnants of that in Ohio where you see all the uh, places like that and the effigy mounds, et cetera. Next, the archaic period. And in the archaic period, that's when they started, uh, this slide should have been before the other one, sorry. Uh, the archaic period is when they started actually making crops, growing food. And in the woodland period, the one we just saw, they uh, made pottery and that dramatically in to cook with and that dramatically increased agriculture. So a lot of the foods that we have today in the world, corn is a good example, squash is another example, started right there uh, and were cultivated in, in uh, thousands of years ago. Next. And then we get to the Mississippian period. This is where Cahokia was. Uh, it started about 900 years after um, or C CE and in 1500, it just disappeared. And where did the people go? We're gonna talk about that too, so next. A lot of people don't realize, but there are mound sites, which are Mississippians, well, the ancient people sites, mound sites all over the country. And here are a lot of them right here on this map. When we go to look at the website we have, they're all linked. And so kids can go and look at every one of them, find the one near them, compare mound sites with each other. Uh, how old were they? What have they done? And it's really very interesting to look at them. So next. Here's one of the artifacts. We have, we have worked we, with 20, I think it's 22 museums have contributed their uh, materials for us to make into three-dimensional models. This particular one is a conch shell. It was found in Arkansas. Arkansas is way away from uh, the ocean where the conch shells form. And the Mississippians, this whole group of people were called a riverine society. All of the villages that I showed you the map earlier were on a river. And so we know they traded because when things are found at Cahokia uh, that uh, are made out of shell, you know, somebody had to go there. And the interesting thing about Cahokia, they had a copper mine there and you find copper ornaments as far down as in Florida, uh, as high up as Wisconsin, and it all came from the copper that was mined at Cahokia. Next. So a fascinating part of the history of the early uh, ancient people 
was their belief system. And so I included a little bit. That's one whole area that we're going to have in the is an investigation called Gods and Heroes. And so we're going to look at this little video that gives you an introduction to that. Think about it. The Mississippians had no computers, no space satellites or telescopes, no libraries of information to draw upon. Their concept of their world and their place in it came from what they could see with their own eyes and what they could imagine. The sky itself became their book. And as we've seen, they took a great interest in the sun and its path of the seasons. The sun brought light and life and provided order in their world. At sundown, a canopy of stars came forth for the Mississippians with a new and different set of signs and symbols. Some of them seeming to be the opposite of the day sky. For example, the moon taking place of the sun. From what they could see with their own eyes and the ideas that came from those observations, the Mississippians developed a worldview, a concept of the structure of their universe. We made an animation to help bring their view of the world to life. Check it out. For the Mississippians, the universe consisted of three levels. The above world or overworld. In other words, the sky. The middle world, where they presently live. And the beneath world or underworld. A central axis connected all these levels and could take the form of a center pole or sacred tree. And finally, watch this. Here's the night sky that would rise, taking the place of the day sky. For the Mississippians, each of these levels was home to specific supernatural beings. Some of them could actually travel from one level to the others. Right. These supernaturals often represented opposing roles or opposing forces. For example, a dominant figure is the Birdman, who ensures the triumph of day over night, life over death, and summer over winter. And opposing the Birdman, or Morning Star, is the Great Serpent, who can take on many appearances, often with the wings and sometimes with the body of a panther. You see him here, too, in the underworld. The Great Serpent represents darkness and death and the forces of evil. Awesome, right? We could go on and on about all these other symbols and figures, like the Hand and Eye and the Milky Way. But hey, that would take the fun out of it for you. What can you find out about the Mississippi worldview? And then ask yourself, what's your own worldview? Next. Uh, this is an animation of the worldview. I think we'll skip it. You know what it is. I put it in here because our people do excellent 3D animation. But let's move on it's because of the time. The sun, here are the types of activities that we have. We call them interactive uh, knowledge points where you go in. Uh, it basically is put together where in, in this particular situation, these two artifacts were found in 1900. And uh, well, the, the Birdman tablet was found in, in the 70s. And what did they mean? How did they know what it mean? Where did they come from? What was the mystery? And then we add other uh, artifacts in there. Next. We have virtual field assignments. And back again, I was showing you how you can get to all the uh, other sites, the Mississippian sites. And this is an activity where the kids uh, prepare a uh, field assignment. Again, the technology is such that you they load it up right there, they do it online, load it up right there and send it to their teacher. And this particular one is talking about the major sites in the Mississippian world. So next. Then we have whiteboards within the uh, uh, application as well. And they are asked to draw a symbol and it's again on a whiteboard, they can draw it as elaborately as they want to and can send it uh, back again to their teacher. This is a type of stuff that works great uh, during things like COVID and uh, an inspiration for a lot of what we're doing 
there are a lot of people that want to know about Cahokia, a lot of schools. There are 33 states that require uh, studies on ancient, ancient America, and there are very few materials. So we can reach somebody wherever they are, and teachers can reach kids whether they're home or in the summer or wherever. So next. Here's another type of, uh, this, this one is created for the uh, tour. We will hopefully have these, uh, these uh, models available in schools where kids can actually look through the, a uh, phone or an iPad and put the models on the floor. In this particular case, you could also get in the picture and take a picture of yourself with the bird man. And that will be done at Cahokia, and hopefully we will have these types of things in schools by the fall. So next, just again, here's animation. Uh, it, this one has no sound. Uh, we will definitely make movies of the Cahokia models. This, this is uh, a model that is superimposed on the ground. If this, were, if you were at Cahokia and you were looking through an iPad, you would see grass down at the bottom and you would see the uh, houses there. And in, at Cahokia, you can also go in them. And we have done a lot of testing over at Cahokia and people are just amazed. I mean, they're sitting there saying, I can't believe this, you know, just strangers that are happen to be out there. So that's uh, an example of the type of housing. All of this, by the way, we had Indian advisors, we have architects, archaeologist, you can go move on to the next one, uh, to make sure that everything is, is accurate. Um, so there they are, the archaeologists, the tribal leaders in 22 museums, and many, many, many thanks to the National Endowment for the Humanities. And so now I think we should take a look at the website because that's where, well, I think there might be one more slide. Is there one more slide? Uh, yes, I think so. Two more slides. Okay, the augmented reality tour will be available uh, on July the 1st. There it is, that, that was the wireframes. So you can see how big it is. You're gonna look out there and see all of that the way it was a thousand years ago. Okay, next. And so you sign up, it's gonna be free. Uh, you have to go to the website, which is projectarcheo.com and we can take a quick look at that and then if you have any questions, I can answer them. Here's our website. Oops. Oops. <laughs> anyway, right on that green bar, you see where it says sign up now, and it goes to an app, uh, a form, which then we get, as I said, we already have 279 teachers that have signed up. Now there are people that are around the, this area and know it and knew it was being developed, uh, but we hope to attract teachers anywhere and everywhere. So um, you can also look over at the about and that's all the architect, uh, archeologists and uh, tribal leaders that we had working with us on this. Uh, like I say, it's no point in doing it if it's not right. And, and there, all of my team is looking at it from the top of Monk's Mound. So um, maybe we should look back again at the uh, investigate page. Again, reminding you that there are six investigations that we will have now. They will be aligned to the standards and they will include geography exercises, math activities, writing, technology activities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, all kinds of things. We will, it also has a virtual library so teachers can add other types of lessons to it to extend learning and share with other people. And so it's basically a starter thing. I believe since I'm an old school administrator uh, that if things are all interconnected rather than separated into little 
silos kids learn better and they understand how everything functions together so that's basically uh this is kind of a, uh, an opportunity to do just that so if you go back to examine now closing you will see the artifacts if you move down just a little bit I have over there on the left-hand side a 15-minute movie that you can watch in your leisure on the making of augmented reality tour. And as I said, it's going to be ready this summer. Hopefully, we will be using the same artifacts uh, for a school project so we can have archaeology uh, done right there in, in the gym or in the, the schoolyard. And uh, Watch if for anyone that signs up, they will get all kinds of information about this. Like I say, it's free now, and uh, we would like all we want in return is for teachers to answer some surveys so we can perfect and make the product as good as it can be. So that's all. I thank you very much, and uh, it's been fun. Awesome. Thank you so much, Betty, for sharing all of your work. I'm um, definitely echoing Rachel's comments that you know the the the, the content really just looks incredibly detailed. Um, maybe I can start off with a few questions. If if um, folks uh, in the audience want to drop their questions in the chat, I'd be happy to relay those um, for the last, last few minutes here. Um, but Betty, I'm, I'm I'm like you know also curious in what type of classroom setting do you imagine your content is best suited for? You know, whether it's uh, maybe you know, across subjects, so does it belong in geography or history class or yeah, you can can anywhere? Do all of that. Uh, I think mainly this is upper elementary grades in an, in an elementary self-contained classroom. It's a starter for anything else you want to do. I mean, you can write about this. You can do math about it. Uh, the activities and the teacher can add activities to the to the platform so uh, and, and there's a management system a roster on it so um, it can be anything I think when you get into secondary school you can have um, the math teacher have some using for some things and uh, multiple teachers can use it it can be used in summer school doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be um, in the regular classroom and I think right now with what we call learning loss, I think what you need to do is find things, inspire kids that they want to do. If you can do anything that they want to do, uh, then they will write. They will do math. They will do all the rest of it if they have to do that to get to the next level of what we're talking about. And I think augmented reality and I think things like this are inspirational to kids. Or I hope so. Yeah. Awesome. And, and what... Um what, if anything, you know, have you learned in kind of the early stages of, of you know, trying it out with a few teachers or, um, or through early implementation? Um, you know, have you, uh, you've learned surprises, um, things that you weren't expecting along the way? Well, you always learn things along the way. <laughs> and so when you, that's a, a good reason for having something free for a while with, with uh, surveys. Uh, and then you can go tweak it. It's really, that's the nice thing about technology too. We can change any of this. I changed a whole bunch of things after I talked to you all uh, earlier because I decided the order wasn't right and I can continue to do that. And, um, you know, you can teach it round or flat. You can get kids a lot or a little. Uh, and it's just, uh, I think it's the type of subject that uh, needs to be included in schools. We need to know of the contributions of Native Americans all the way back rather than just uh, skip over it. And there's some amazing things which we do have included in the uh, curriculum. Awesome. Um, and maybe, maybe one uh, final question from me, um, if, if any others, uh, please uh, drop it in the chat. Um, Hey, you know, uh, could you preview a little bit more about the, the, the process for creating the, the AR, the augmented reality piece of this? I know it's coming later this summer, um, but, you know, just love to learn more about, you know, what, what went into that process. Oh, well, we started off with uh, Cahokia. We do a lot of work for museums and have for 25 years. 
And uh, they wanted, and you know, for a while, there were all these audio tours. Well, we did that. And then we decided at Cahokia, you had to do video tours. So that we did the first video iPod tours. And so they came and asked us about updating that and doing something that was cooler. And my son, who was sitting in the room, said, oh, well, what we'll do is augmented reality. And they said, oh, that's exactly what we want. Explain what it is. So he went on explaining what it was. And the fact of the matter, we had no one on our team that knew anything about it. So we started off with, okay, here we have it. Let's do it. And uh, we sent a proposal into the NEH, and they said, fantastic. They hadn't seen anyone do it in a huge historic site like that. So we have worked around the clock. And when you see the fruits of your labor and you see how exceptional it has it's become, then the work was all worth the effort. And as I say, we have been out standing on top of Monk's Mound with iPads looking at this stuff and the visitors that are, that are just there want to look and see what's, what we've got. And we've got a temple on top of Monk's Mound that you can actually go into. You feel like you're going into it. And they're all just sitting there in amazement. So it's been worth it. I hope it's, it's hard to explain to people why someone should take a, you know, an opportunity like this and run with it. But I think the more people see it, uh, we also, by the way, won uh, for the American Association of Museums, the Gold Muse Award, you know, Augmented Reality. And from that, we've had, oh, a dozen, if not more than that, museums call wanting to, us to do something for their virtual extensions in augmented reality. So all of this kind of fits together so we can kind of move it this way or that way and tailor it to meet the needs of where people may be. Well, well it's great to hear about those, those new collaborations. Um, and, and again, thank you so much for uh, presenting today and sharing uh, your work with us. Well, thank you. And thanks to the National Endowment for the Humanities.